Men, after every shave, you need new Ice Blue Aqua Velva, the aftershave lotion that's better for your skin. Aqua Velva cools away razor burn, soothes irritated skin, contains humectin, a skin conditioner that puts back skin moisture. Get new Ice Blue Aqua Velva in this handsome decanter bottle. You'll like its clean, manly scent. You'll hear him say, There's something about an Aqua Velva man. Hello everyone, I hope all is well. Welcome in. This is the beginning of the aftershave series of shave videos where I'm going to focus on aftershave products under the same brand name. So for example, in this first volume and series of shaves, we're going to do Aqua Velva products and you know compare those in a shave. And what I'll do in each individual shave is do half of the face with one of the aftershave products, the other half with the other and then compare them. And I'm gonna compare them in the areas of scent and performance and value uh, and availability and presentation, just to give you my overall thoughts of what I think of them. Now in the, the shaves themselves, I'll give you more first impression type of things, first impressions of scent and performance. But at the end of the whole series of shaves where I focus on one brand, I'll give you sort of a summary video where I do a more in-depth comparison without a shave and just talk about the aftershaves, which ones I like the best, those kinds of things. So after the conclusion of all these Aqua Velva shaves, I'll have an Aqua Velva aftershave video to sort of sum up everything I learned. But I'll still do these type of shave vlog videos where I'm doing the two aftershaves sort of facing off with each other. So as I said, we're starting with Aqua Velva. And the one you can see most commonly here in the US is the Aqua Velva Classic Ice Blue. And this switched a few years ago, actually about a decade ago, to plastic bottles, um, which to me, uh, right off the bat, is disappointing. Uh, if you look at most of the shave forums, and I don't, I don't really know the full chemistry behind uh, this, it's not my field, but it's my, you know, my understanding from reading a lot of people's experience that uh, plastic bottles tends to degrade the scent, particularly, of aftershaves. It may degrade the properties, I have no idea, uh, but I do know that people's experience, at least on the shaving forums, is that it degrades the scent. And I, and I went and, you know, gave a sniff of my bottle of Panad uh, Clubman, and I was like, sure enough, that smells very different than when I first got it, and I've had it a couple of years. So I actually went to the refrigerator and I said, okay, are any of these products in the door of the refrigerator out of, out of date? And lo and behold, there was a bottle of soy sauce that was almost empty, but still in date. Same thing for rice wine vinegar and also a malt vinegar. Now the malt vinegar had just gone out of date, so I emptied that bottle. I combined the soy sauce with another bottle of soy sauce and then combined the rice wine with another bottle of rice wine. So what did I do? I took those bottles and this one, I cleaned, I cleaned them out good. I actually soaked them. Uh, in some Goo Gone, which is a product that will remove like adhesive stuff pretty easy. I uh, also put boiling hot water uh, to the sides there. Uh, anyway, too, it made it much easier to get the label off. And so this is the Pinot Clubman. And in the malt vinegar one, I put uh, Brut because my Brut aftershave was in a plastic container. And then um, the Florida water is also in plastic. It's my understanding you can get it in a larger uh, glass bottle. Um, but I put the Florida water in the uh, rice wine uh, vinegar uh, bottle. And if you clean these out, you know, well, you know, the, you remove all the smell of the previous product that was in there. So uh, I actually have some other uh, glass bottles with uh, shaker tops uh, coming. Um, and I can, you know, put some more of my aftershaves that are in plastic into those glass bottles. Okay, so that was the first Aqua Velva that we tend to see in the U.S. Uh, another one we tend to see in the U.S. is Aqua Velva Musk. Uh, and as you would expect, this has a musky scent and obviously it has a different color, sort of an amber hue to it there. So that'll be one we'll be looking at. You also commonly see the Aqua Velva Ice Sport uh, cooling aftershave. So I assume this has quite a bit of menthol uh, in it. And so you see that one often. It's also in a plastic bottle, as is the musk. Uh, then one that I don't see as often on store shelves, 
but I ordered this one, is the Aqua Velva Sensitive 5-in-1 Aftershave Balm. So this is a balm and not an alcohol-based splash, so we'll be looking at that. Then there's the one that's made in Spain, the Williams Expert Aftershave Aqua Velva, and I'll take that translation to be probably lotion. And then finally, I don't have the actual bottle this comes in, but one of my good friends over at The Shaving Cadre, who also has a YouTube channel, Spider, uh, KJ, I'll put a link to his channel below, Spider Shaves for The Shaving Cadre. He uh, is what I would consider the aftershave king. He has quite a stock of different uh, varieties of aftershave, and he was willing to send me a little sample size of Aqua Velva Original Sport. Uh, it's probably hard to see here. Maybe if I hold it up with the against the blue, you can tell. But it's actually green. And I'll roll in an image of it here and what it looks like, the container would look like. It's only available in Canada. But thankfully, uh, Spider had some of this and was willing to send it along to me. So I wanted to use an unscented soap in this aftershave series to try to give the uh, best sort of uh, playing field to weigh the different scents. Sterling actually has three different unscented soaps. They have the sheep, which has the mutton tallow instead of beef tallow. Uh, they have the naked and smooth, which would be just the beef tallow version, but unscented. And then they have unscented with beeswax, which um, doesn't have lanolin in it because some people are allergic to lanolin. So I'm going to be using these in the aftershave uh, series of shaves. I think I'm going to start with the sheep one and I'm going to put it into one of the most uh, inexpensive type of uh, shaving bowls, although it's not intended for that, that you can buy. You can get these little um, stainless steel bowls sometime in the pet food section for like pet food bowls, but also sometimes in like the uh, cooking utensils section uh, as prep bowls or dipping bowls. And uh, so I'm going to open this up and press this down into the stainless steel container. Let me just briefly mention before I get into the shave, today for the shower I use the Clubman shampoo and yes it does smell like Pinal Clubman. And I also use the bar soap from Lakewood Soap Company and this is the Smoky Mountain Rain scent. Okay, I'm going to fast forward here through the pre-shave routine. I will slow it down here to mention uh, I'm going to use for the first time a, a newer product from Sterling, at least I think it's a newer product, is their unscented uh, pre-shave soap. It comes in the same types of boxes that their bath soap comes in. They have this in a menthol and then in an unscented. So it's just a bar. Okay, on the Sterling website, they say you can put this on, then you know, wash it off as a pre-shave wash, or if you want to put it on and leave it on and lather on top of it. Today, I'm gonna to do the option of uh, washing it off or at least putting a hot towel back over it. I thought in the Aqua Velva series, you notice I've got my blue shirt on, thought we need to go with the Wild West Brushworks handle here that's sort of an Aqua Velva blue color. So I'm gonna go in here and load up the Sterling. And again, we're using the sheep unscented, so this is the mutton tallow as opposed to beef tallow. Kind of just brush on here this beginnings of lather. I'm not lathering in the bowl, I'm going to do a face lather. I much prefer face lathers to bowl lathers, so when I can, I try to do a face lather. Let's dip the tips here. Blue shirt didn't stay just blue for long. Once again, as usual. Uh, the Shaving Cadre has a really unique shirt that's come out. Uh, I'll link it down in the description below. I encourage you to uh, come over and join us on the Shaving Cadre if you're interested in joining a group of gentlemen that uh, try to discuss wet shaving and other things in life in a very gentlemanly way. We tend to stay away from political issues and controversial issues and just a place to uh, sort of hang out and talk about wet shaving. 
But the shirt, the new shirt has an area that says excess lather storage around the neck. Okay, I probably could add more water, but I'm going to stop there. I'm going to be using the Mercur 43C, not the 34C. It's the same head as the 34C, but a different handle. And I have a Gillette Nasset blade on its second use. So let's get in here for the first pass. And I'm going to fast forward through this uh, and give you my impressions after the first pass of this unscented sheep soap from Sterling. Okay, good first pass. The soap performed well. Get back in here for the second pass. Well, I got a phone call and I didn't get the video restart. My sister called me and I uh, thought I restarted the recording, but apparently I didn't. Uh, so the shave is over and I've actually already applied the uh, post shaves, but let me tell you what I did and then we'll talk about my, what my experience was. So I used the uh, European Spanish one on this side um, and I used the American one on this side. Just used the uh, left hand for the Spanish one and the right hand for the American one applied it to this side of the face and that side of the face you get the deal. Um, I definitely like the bottle the um, even though they have similar size holes this one came out in a way that was much more limiting where you could control how much you got. This one came out too freely in my opinion and also you just have the um, plastic bottle which I also don't uh, care for for a variety of reasons. This one had a little bit, the, the, the scents are somewhat similar, but they're also very different. This one had a little bit of spice to it. And this one was just sort of a pine, um, fir, spruce kind of scent with a little bit of that aquatic that you would expect from this. Um, these actually have scent notes. I'm not going to go into them in this video. I will in the summary video, but this... I just want to kind of give you my first impressions. I'm actually going to put some on the back of my hands so I can check it later and see how the scent does in terms of dry down, how long it lasts, that kind of thing. Uh, as far as face feel, they, they feel very similar with the exception that the European side one, the Spanish one, um, <clears throat> did feel a little bit more tacky. However, I'm noticing that as I felt it while ago, it was tacky, but now just giving it even a couple more minutes, it's less tacky but it's still a bit more tacky than this side, which is not a problem. I mean, honestly, if I was using this, either one of these products, I'd still use a balm of some type afterwards, uh, but I'm not uh, for the purposes of checking out these shades and seeing how they do in post-shave feel for a while. Um, so I actually set a timer here and check on them in like an hour and a couple hours and see how they're doing in terms of scent and how, what the face feel is like. But a positive shave overall with both the uh, Sterling Sheep soap and these two aqua velva products so uh you know i have my ideas of which these two i like better but i'm not going to kind of reveal that yet till i've gone all the way through all of the aftershaves and uh, give you my final impressions on all of them i think probably what we'll do for the uh, next shave we will do uh, a face off between the most the two most common ones if i could turn it around correctly i see in the u.s and that's the the musk and then the ice blue, uh, ice blue classic, which we use today, facing off against the uh, Spanish one. All right, so um, I want to wrap up this video by talking about uh, kind of the direction of the channel. I know, I know when I hear other YouTubers talk about the direction of the channel, I think, oh, no, here comes a long diatribe about where things are headed. But um, what I just wanted to say is I wanted to talk briefly about why I started making videos 
and then why I continue making videos, because those are kind of different things. There are some overlap there. But briefly, the reason I started making videos is because I benefited so much from other people's videos when I started uh, traditional wet shaving. I love watching them. I learned so much from them. And as I started to learn things, I actually made some videos that I didn't uh, put out on the internet, but just sent to my brother to get him started. And, um, you know, he found them helpful. And I also just like talking about the scents that I love. And so my first video, if I'm not mistaken, is my top 10 spring summer soaps uh, from last year. And um, I really enjoyed making that one. So, you know, I made another one and just like making those and putting the content out there. And also it just made my interaction with people in the community um, occur more frequently, right? Because as people started commenting on my videos and I started getting messages from people. And what I didn't expect is that my videos would affect people in other ways other than just wet shaving. So for example, I've had a couple of shavers contact me and say, hey, your, your videos helped get me through a difficult time, which like shocked me. And then other ones said, you know, um, you know, I, I like watching your videos because they remind me of my dad or granddad or uncle. Like I've had a variety of comments uh, in that uh, regard. And so a lot of people just uh, enjoy them and find them, um, I guess, relaxing or um, they kind of are a distraction or um, sort of entertainment, if you will. And I know that's been true for me for a lot of uh, YouTubing uh, wet shavers. So while I, I don't um, even pretend to be uh, even near that pantheon of some of our, you know, longer standing uh, YouTubers in, in the wet shaving community. Um, I do know that I've affected a few people's lives in positive ways. And that's why I'm going to continue making videos is because I want to talk about not just wet shaving, which will be my primary topic. But, you know, as you, you can see, I throw in a few other things around like men's gear, like pocket knives and flashlights and um, those kinds of things. But I also want to just talk about, particularly, or specifically, uh, men's mental health. If you look at the rates of suicide among middle-aged men in America, the rise that's occurring, it's alarming. Uh, I've known personally um, four men in their uh, middle-aged years who committed suicide. Um, I know that this community has had people... Um, that you know have made videos where they talk about losing loved ones but also on some of the shaving forums I've seen people open up about depression and anxiety and so I want to talk a little bit about that during shaves I'm gonna keep that sort of brief when I when I do it but um, I am a social worker by training I'm currently a social work uh, professor and I used to be the director of a community mental health center and while I'm not going to give you uh, medical advice or even clinical advice I'm just going to share you, with you some sort of commonly known things about men's mental health and how you can uh, help. As a way to start that whole uh, process, I'm going to link in the description below uh, to the Movember uh, website. You're probably familiar with their No Shave November where uh, people will go like grow, goatees to raise money for prostate cancer uh, treatment and awareness. And, but they also look at other aspects of men's health, including men's mental health. And so I'm going to link specifically to the area of their website that looks at men's mental health. So I encourage you to, to check that out. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to talk about that more uh, in the videos while I shave uh, because the, you know, I'm, the, the shaving is the main focus. But at the same time, I want people to get as much as they can out of my videos. And I think that that's kind of my unique niche that I, that I want to sort of focus on because it is really important, uh, particularly when you look at the rising rates uh, among middle-aged men. So... Thanks for listening to that bit of an update and kind of where my heart is in terms of where I want to take this channel. Um, and, you know, I know I may lose some viewers because of that, but I really, that, that doesn't uh, bother me. Like I hate to lose anybody within sort of my little YouTube community, but um, I want to continue to have that effect where my videos affect people in other ways and just, just wet shaving. So I hope that makes sense. Um, thanks for listening to that. If you, if you're still here for the end of the video, but um as I said, next time we'll probably do these two facing off. Uh, I'm going to set a timer and give you an update uh, on these, how these perform uh, in the next video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.